Gracious God, let these words be more than words. Give us the spirit of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. May I be the first to officially wish you a Merry Christmas. Here at Holy Communion, we say we are a welcoming and diverse community, and we take those values seriously. Whoever you are, whatever brings you to church tonight, you are welcome. Whether you are here because your parent or grandparent or child asked you to come, it is good to build up political capital at home. If you're a parent checking out this odd little church that your child has chosen for herself, it is good to build up political capital at home. If you are here because it is Christmas and you are taking a gamble on coming to church, you're welcome. We're glad you're here. Merry Christmas. This Christmas, pay attention. Pay attention. There's a word in Greek in the gospel that caught me as I was preparing for this sermon, partly because it sounds a lot like a, a, some of the babblings of my 14-month-old son, Silas. It's not a highfalutin Greek word. It's just the word idu. Idu. It sounds like something he babbles. It means pay attention. The Greek uh, translated to the King James is behold. Fear not, for behold, I bring you great tidings of great joy. Our translation tonight renders the angel's words, See, see, I am bringing you good news. And so tonight, if you have a pencil, I'd invite you to scratch out that word, see. And above it, write that fun Greek word, edu. Or maybe a more literal translation of the angel's word, pay attention. Pay attention. Our 14-month-old Silas coming into our lives has meant I've been thinking a great deal more about attention. Anyone who's spent time with an almost one and then one-year-old can tell you it's not for the faint of heart. Just keeping him alive, I have to pay attention to outlets, to the dog's water bowl, always the dog's water bowl, to, to, to whatever has gotten off the floor and into his mouth this time. But that's not the kind of attention, that frightened, anxious attention I've been thinking about as I've been getting ready for this Christmas homily, thanks to Silas. A few months ago, on a morning when I slept in a little later than usual and I didn't get my morning prayer before Silas woke up, I I found myself with the little guy on my lap as I read the morning psalm. It was sort of an experiment to see if I could do my morning prayers with Silas there in my lap. It went mostly okay, probably because he had a bottle in his mouth the whole time on one of the really slow nipples. But as he sat there, I found myself just holding him in the silence after the psalm. And we watched one another and just watched. We were attentive and present to each other. Neither of us had to do or say anything. He was quiet in my arms. It might have helped that he was at that point a little bit more baby than the toddler he's becoming now. But I found myself awake to something between us. And oddly, even though it was months before Christmas, I found myself wondering about Mary and Joseph and those shepherds gathered around. There is something miraculous about being so attentive with a quiet little one. Pay attention, the angel says. The intention that the angel invites, it moves those shepherds. Did you notice? When the messenger first appears, they're terrified. And this word, it moves them from anxiety to rejoicing. In the verses that follow our reading, these shepherds leave behind the fear. The shepherds leave the flocks. They run with great haste, the Bible tells us, to find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. They run to find the one about whom the heavens are singing. They run to pay attention. This Christmas, how will you pay attention? How will you hear the voices of the angels? 
Will you allow your heart to be moved from fear? Attention's a commodity in our world. I wonder if anyone has timed out how many minutes of each day I spend watching advertisements as I scroll through my phone, my computer, my television, even at the gas pump. Attention has been quantified, counted, sold by the second. Technology just gets better and better at holding our gaze. One of my favorite Christian writers is a Roman Catholic Franciscan named Richard Rohr. I heard Rohr speak in England a few years ago. He talked about an important realization he'd had. Richard lives in Albuquerque. If you spend any time in northern New Mexico, you know about the sunsets. Most every night, the sky in that whole region, it turns these improbable shades of red, orange, pink, violet. The stone of the mountains behind Albuquerque looks like watermelon at night, they say. Richard spoke there in England about a recent evening when he caught a glimpse of a particularly vivid sunset just out the corner of his eye as he was watching the news. I realized, said Richard, I realized that I was missing an important cosmic event. I turned off the TV and walked outside. How often do we realize that we are being distracted, professionally distracted, How often do we turn our attention to the cosmic events? Attention is precious. Paying attention in a world of distraction can be a precious gift. If you're like me tonight, that might be a trigger word for you, gift. As you listen to the sermon, it might trigger a whole list of things left wrapped to be wrapped at home after the service. And the gifts we give this season They might have little to do with the story of Jesus laid in a manger, no room at the inn. But the tradition of gift giving has value at Christmas, I'd say. It's not, isn't it often the case that what we get, what we give, the material itself for Christmas, it's less important than the act of giving, the act of receiving. Gifts are a stand-in, a marker that we have seen someone, that we have been seen, that we've been noticed. So how this Christmas might we put down our distractions? How could we give the gift of our attention? This word of the angel to the shepherds, you do, behold, pay attention, see, however you like it. The scholars say it's likely a stand-in for yet another common expression, this one in Hebrew, hine, be present. Our son Silas doesn't babble that one. Hebrew is a lot harder than Greek, apparently. But by elementary school, if a child's name is called in class in Israel, the child responds, Hineni, I am present. I am here. How will you be present this holiday? One of the highest words of praise that I've ever heard for someone, one of those phrases you hear about someone and you know they really are a great leader is this. When you speak to her, it's as if no one else in the world exists for her. Have you heard someone say that of a great leader? She really pays attention to the person right in front of her. She's present. I've known some leaders like that. I aspire and fail regularly to be a leader like that but I know it's worth trying. Your attention might be the blessed gift needed by a family member, a niece, a cousin, a sibling, a parent, someone on the road this Christmas. Being present has the capacity to bring real change. If attention can bring real change in our home life, how much more can our choice to pay attention transform our world? This is the good news of great joy. God has chosen to pay attention. God has heard the cry of the people. God has come down. God has chosen to be born, to move into the neighborhood. I believe the specific neighborhood matters. Where God chose to dwell matters. Notice God does not choose the center of power. Not Augustus' Rome or Quirinius' Antioch or Herod's Jerusalem. 
God's not born even in the center of Bethlehem, that marginal village outside the capital. God is born outside the village to an unmarried couple who could not find a roof over their heads. God pays attention to the edge of the edge of human existence. It is there with the poor, with the shepherds, with the animals, with a family who have been forced onto the road by their government. It is there that God becomes present. God makes a specific choice of where to be present. God pays attention and God asks us to pay attention as well. Location continues to matter. I don't have to say that in St. Louis, you all know. You're home talking about where you went to high school. <laughs> Location matters. Where God chooses to pay attention matters. The African-American theologian Howard Thurman wrote the following words of Christmas. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. Find the lost, heal the broken, release the prisoner, feed the hungry, pay attention to those still on the edges, pay attention to those who are hurting, pay attention to those excluded from power, pay attention to those whose rights are denied. Surely it is with those who are on the edge that God continues to dwell. Edu. I swear, since I started to work on this homily and I opened up the Greek, I've heard Silas speak Greek in his babbles at least daily. Ye do, behold, pay attention. God has come to us. Christ has been born for us. Scandalously, Christmas tells us God chose to become vulnerable. God chose to pay a humbling attention to our human needs. God continues to be present to us. And the angel's invitation stands to move from fear to presence, to run with haste to greet the one who comes, to go to the neighborhoods that are still on the edge. Let the work of Christmas begin, to find, to heal, to feed, to rebuild. Let the work of Christmas begin. Pay attention. Amen.